I now call the Huntsville City Council meeting to order. If all that were like to and are able to, please rise for the invocation led by Dr. Keith Burden, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Boy Scout Troop 343. Shall we pray? God of all nations, the impartial one who causes the sun to shine on the worthy and the unworthy, the omnipotent one who restrains his infinite strength through his own benevolent mercy, the trust in one who has implanted the gift of free choice in every individual. We come to you this evening in recognition of your unparalleled sovereignty. As our representatives deliberate this evening, may they be reminded of their divine responsibility. They are not only ministers of the state, but by virtue of their office, they are ministers of heaven. Indeed, you have witnessed this very moment before the creation of the earth. You already know the decisions that will be made before they are even made. You already know if their work will reflect their submission to your generous will or their own self-interests. May they accept that it is their responsibility to ensure that justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And so, Lord, attune their minds to your will, confuse their personal agendas so that they may align their wills to your agenda, and may your spirit find a welcome place in these halls this evening. These things we humbly present to you in your matchless and holy name, as the people say, amen. Boy Scouts. Thank you, Dr. Burden, and thank you, Boy Scout Troop 343. The minutes from the April 9th meeting have been received, and they'll stand approved. There's no objections. We're now on to resolutions and special recognitions. Mayor, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. President, could I ask that Jay Stowe, uh, CEO of Hustle Utilities, come forward? Jay, we have a proclamation for you tonight. Um, Many people don't realize that Huntsville Utilities has been in operation in the city of Huntsville for 75 years now. And we have a proclamation that has about 33 whereases in it, and I'm going to spare every one of you the whereases. Uh, but it says some great things, and when you have a chance, you need to look this up online and, and look at it because it's got some great history about Huntsville Utilities. Uh, how it was started by the city of Huntsville as a municipal entity in Madison County, and it operates a city-owned, not-for-profit public utility doing business as Huntsville Utilities. It provides electricity for all Madison County residents and water and natural gas to Huntsville customers, uh, and has been doing it for 75 years. Without Huntsville Utilities, we would not have had the growth we've had for the last 75 years. We would not have uh, the kind of community, successful community that we've had for 75 years. And so I'm going to save y'all all the whereas's, but tell you that now, therefore, be it resolved that the city of Huntsville commemorates the 75th anniversary of the Huntsville Utilities in Huntsville, Alabama, and be it further resolved that May 7th, 2015, in the city of Huntsville shall be recognized as Huntsville Utilities and TVA Day. And uh, this will be known uh, th throughout the area. And Jay, we want to say thank you for all that Huntsville Utilities has done. This is signed by all the members of the city council and the mayor, so it is a unanimous resolution. And thank you for all the work that Huntsville Utilities has done. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you uh, on behalf of all the employees of uh, Huntsville Utilities. Uh, the support that we get from city council in the city is, uh, has been wonderful and have been a, made us uh, successful for 75 years. We'll keep on uh, trying to do what's best for our customers. And uh, if we do it well, then everyone else can do their job well. And that's what we try to do every day. So thank you very much for your support. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank, you. thank you, Jay. And as we say, keep the lights on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Mayor, if I could stop you a second, we need to approve this. It's a resolution commemorating the 75th anniversary of Huntsville Utilities and recognizing May 7, 2015 as Huntsville Utilities and TVA Day in Huntsville, Alabama. The chair moves for approval. Second, Second by Mr. Kling. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? It carries. Mayor? Congratulations, Jay. It was a 5-0, vote <laughs> with one person absent. Um, Karen Rodriguez, Ms. Rodriguez, would you please come up? Many of, you don't, many of you may not know that we have a great culinary arts program here in the city of Huntsville. And do you want to bring all your students up? Would you ask them to come up too, please? Uh, this culinary arts program is run out of, the, um, uh, out of the Huntsville Center for Technology, and they came in first place in state champions in our state competition. Is that right? Good. Well, introduce your team here and tell us a little bit about them. This is Cedric Schein. He's a junior at Lee. This is Franklin Jackson, junior at Lee. Um, Taylor Lanier, junior at Lee. And Branna Fletcher, junior at Grissom. Good. And tell us about your championship and what they went through. We had three menus that we, had, that we were supposed to practice, but weather <laughs> kind of kept us from practicing those. And... Um, they give us the menu a couple weeks in advance, so we practiced that menu and went down just hoping for the best, and they pulled it off. They were the only gold medal, so that's pretty cool. Fantastic, guys. We want to say congratulations to you. We have uh, some, re some resolutions for you to say thank you for your work, and what y'all don't realize is, is that you are part of our workforce development effort here in the city of Huntsville because as we grow and as we have more and more restaurants and hospitality units come online, they need workers. And if they don't have a trained workforce, then we can't achieve what we want to achieve. And y'all are part of that trained workforce. So I want to say thank you to each of you and congratulations on your gold medal. Thank you. And Mr. President, if it's uh, all right with you, a little bit out of order, I would like to announce the following reappointments. Katie Stamps to the Huntsville Historic Preservation Commission for six years for a term to expire May 3rd, 2021. Peter Lowe to the Huntsville Historic Preservation Commission for a six-year term to expire May 3rd, 2021. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We now have a, a presentation called the Civic Challenge. It's a presentation by Lee High School and Randolph School students uh, presenting information on how Huntsville can become a big gig city. Uh, Mr. West, do you want to introduce the program? This is Mason West from Randolph School. Thank you, Councilman Russell. I just want to, uh, first of all, thank the uh, city of Huntsville uh, for allowing us to participate in this program. This was a partnership between the uh, Multicultural Affairs Officers uh, Office and Randolph School and Lee High School. And what it does is it, um, the mayor's office challenges the students uh, to solve a problem in the city. And they spend one week uh, at City Hall and at the uh, Chamber of Commerce and also this year at ADTRAN and they identified a problem that they would like to solve and at this time I'm just going to have them come and present their their solution. Good evening and welcome if you'll state your name name for the record then then present your uh, um, solution. Um, good evening my name is Malcolm West. Welcome. Um, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Malcolm West, and I am a junior student at Randolph School. And I'd first like to thank our city leaders, Mayor Tommy Battle and District President Mark Russell and other city council members for attending. I'd also like to thank our city Chamber of Commerce representatives for attending tonight and our mentors from ADTRAN. Along with my welcome, I would like to also state my gratitude and excitement for the possibility of a gig city Huntsville. The very idea of a gigabit speed internet for the city fills me with excitement for what can come out of Research Park. Um, for those of you who don't know, gigabit speed internet is up to 1,000 times faster than what we have right now, saying like we could download a movie in just seconds rather than an hour, which is amazing speed. 
I hope this. Inf I hope the information that is about to be presented to you by these dedicated Randolph and Lee and Lee High School students will show you how a gig city Huntsville will not only breathe new new possibilities, not only for Research Park, but only but also for our schools, private and public, our businesses, small, large, and local, and even our homes. We will specifically focus on this assigned area, which is bounded by which is bounded by Memorial Parkway, Pratt Avenue, and Winchester Drive. Each group will present a different element, one being social, economic, educational, and government. I strongly believe that by the end of this presentation's conclusion, you will see how a gig city will benefit from, how, this, uh, how Huntsville will, ben will benefit from a gig city Huntsville. First, I'd like to start out with social. So now, when I say social, I know that most of you would think of friends and family and communities. My group's goal was to bring together all of these elements and put them in one area, a park next to a and University, to be specific. This park, under the name The Rocket Square, will utilize Huntsville-based businesses for most of its features. That means all the food trucks, equipment, and entertainment will be local. A gig city, Hunts a gig city Huntsville <gasps> would be able to supply free and fast internet to The Rocket Square. With the use of gigabit, with a gigabit hotspot shared by the city, schools, and bu businesses, and private residents, fast internet will be available, theoretically, everywhere. Companies like Google and AdTran already have gathered data and expertise with fiber optics internet. With technology advancing every passing day, gigabit internet is quickly becoming more and more of a possibility. An amphitheater in the park an amphitheater in the park would be in place and open to to the community's use. Schools could provide previews and advertisements for their for their shows and bands. Uh, local bands could pr could promote their music and even special meetings for clubs and groups. The park would also promote art, something our city is already is already working on. An art wall would be in place to display the creations, whether they are paintings or sculptures or ceramics of any kind. There will, be there will be a place for them on the wall. <coughs> Huntsville is a very diverse city, and the Rocket Square is a great way to facilitate diversity and inclusion. Thank you. Thank you, Malcolm. My name is Isabella. And I'm Evan, and we are both juniors at Randolph School. Our project <laughs> was to combine video games with a traditional learning style. The purpose of this would be to engage students in learning. For a couple of days, students would engage in the traditional lecture style learning, and during the latter part of the week, students can reinforce their learning with video <coughs> games. This system can be seen in action in the form of Quest to Learn, a program in New York schools that teaches it's problem solving, collaboration, and systems design. This program has a balance between video games and traditional learning and has already seen much improvement in systems thinking, which is the process of understanding how different aspects of a system connect. Another way to incorporate video games into the school environment is with flipped learning, a method which involves independent study at home by the students, which is supplemented by video game learning in class. The incorporation of video games will be primarily in middle and elementary schools. We would hope to begin this implementation in the target area at schools such as Martin Luther King Jr. Elementary. If this proves a success, we hope to implement this plan into all Huntsville City schools. The students there could use programs made specifically for them. The city of Huntsville could hire gaming companies to produce educational games, encouraging entrepreneurship. Pre-existing programs such as Minecraft EDU or SimCity EDU could be used. Minecraft EDU teaches math and history, while SimCity teaches a variety of subjects such as government, economics, math, and English. It comes with pre-made lesson plans designed to be completed at home and school, requiring a good internet connection at both locations. Internet access is no longer a luxury, but a necessity. While bringing gigabit internet to business is a step in the right direction, we must not forget the students, especially those who do not have easy access to it. 
In order to facilitate both flipped learning and certain programs that require an internet connection at home, we must provide access to the internet. At this point in time, even a connection slower than gigabit would help students tremendously. And by bringing gigabit internet to the city, we can promote a low cost or even free internet connection to all of Huntsville citizens. A study by the Indiana University found 65% of students reported feeling bored at least once a day. This problem could be remedied by the inclusion of video games in the curriculum. It would engage students, foster healthy competition and cooperation, and encourage learning. The way classrooms are set up now causes students to focus on performance goal orientation learning, which is learning for the sake of a grade. Video games focus on mastery goal orientation, which fosters learning for the sake of gaining knowledge. Video games also appeal to a variety of learning styles, and they help focus students' energy and bring learning to life. From a logistical standpoint, there are many companies and programs Huntsville City Schools could potentially partner with to incorporate video game learning. First, Huntsville could work with local companies such as Aegis to plan and develop educational games. They can also work with companies such as Guru Games, an online organization that specializes in games for platforms such as mobile devices, tablets, and the internet. Finally, the school system could work with companies such as Apple to obtain the necessary hardware. Apple worked with educators to develop not only lesson plans, but apps that aid in teaching. Apple also offers pricing plans on its website so the city could determine the cost of implementation. By partnering with both large and small companies, Huntsville can determine the best plan of action to implement this new style of teaching using video games. The U.S. is ranked 17th in education in the world. Alabama is ranked 34th in the nation for student performance and has one of the lowest graduation rates in the U.S. By bringing video games into schools, students will be more likely to stay in school and graduate. At the same time, they will be more prepared to work with and make proper use of the technology, and this will allow them to become leaders in the workforce of tomorrow. After all, the job of education is to prepare students for the future, and how better to prepare them with, than with the technology of today? Thank you. Thank you, Evan and Isabel. Hello, I'm Sahil Patnayakuni, and I'm a senior at Randolph School. Hi, I'm Brianna Ariaga, and I'm a sophomore at Lee High School. Our goal as the economic element was to use gigabit internet to promote entrepreneurship and the development of small businesses in the Huntsville area. We decided to propose a creation of the, a business accelerator. A business accelerator is different from a business incubator in that a business accelerator holds companies for a shorter period of time and is more selective <coughs> with the companies it accepts into its buildings. We propose three possible locations for these business accelerators. One would be to join in a partnership with Alabama A&M for space on their campus. This would offer accessibility for college entrepreneurs and for their professors. The second would be to refurbish the Lincoln Mill offices. They are already built and they have easy highway access. The third would be to use the city land off of Memorial Parkway. We would hope to use this land in partnership with a social element in their business, uh, their building of a park. We would place business accelerators around the park. While the park would attract people for the availability, leisure, and high-speed internet, it would offer people access to shops at their convenience and generate more money into the Huntsville economy. High-speed internet would also attract new industries and companies that Huntsville has not previously seen. For example, the high-tech and entertainment industry require high-speed internet, such as gigabit internet, in order to function. Every year we would hold entrepreneurship competitions within the city. We then <coughs> hope to expand this to, that every two years we can invite the nation to come in. <coughs> Top places would be rewarded with office space and services within the business accelerator for a, approximately three years. And we would hope to partner with small businesses in the local Huntsville area and the Chamber of Commerce, Commerce in order to provide experienced judges, Alabama A&M University and Drake University to provide space and possibly college entrepreneurial entrepreneurial contestants, and big companies that would possibly provide funding and investment in those entrepreneurial companies. 
Examples of this model are the Chattanooga Gig Tank and the popular television show Shark Tank. We hope to start this at the latest by April 2016. We then hope to have the Business Accelerator completed by 2019. With this, we hope to ho host the first um, competition locally in June 2019. There, we would announce the first national competition set in 2020. The whole purpose for our project was to inspire people to live their American dream. Thank you. Good job. Okay, my name is Jamar Carter. I am a junior at Lee High School. And my name is Neelish Manander, and I'm a sophomore at Randolph High School. So the problem that our group found in Madison County and specifically, specifically Huntsville City is the reduced part participation of everyday citizens in their government. Um, only last year, only about 13.9% of the voting population even voted in Madison County for the primaries. We identify this as a problem because we believe that a government is only as good as its citizens, and where its citizens don't have a say within their government, the government cannot improve, it cannot strive to be the best it can be. Okay, we propose that uh, creating a website can give Huntsville a greater voice. This website can be used to allow Huntsville to, uh, give, to vote and give their opinion on current issues in uh, the community. Also, uh, sit, uh, city government involvement would be um, we, we modeled this website based off of a website called We the People, which is a website uh, that the White House actually uses to, uh, for petitions to allow people to petition and vote for things that they want to be changed in America. And after a certain amount of votes, the president looks at it himself. And so we, that's the kind of model that we look for in this website. Uh, also the Gig City, Gig City would benefit uh, hunt benefit the website because uh, it's first thing it's evolving internet and also it will uh, you know cheaper and more affordable in internet would uh, help our, our website. One of our major problems whenever a government website comes up is about the marketing aspect of it. Usually people aren't exposed to the website enough or people who are exposed don't care enough to use it. So one way that we'll market this website so that more people will use it, especially people in the Huntsville community, is by making it a curriculum requirement in schools. This website can be used in schools because it allows students to uh, apply what they've been learning in schools, such as suppose in a history class they're learning about taxation without, the, without representation. And then using this website to see within the community how taxation without representation is a problem or any other problems they're facing that history is faced within their schools that they're learning about. This promotion through schools will be a huge benefit to this website because we'll be exposing a population um, of students which will then expose their parents to them and even friends and people outside the schools. So we'll use the schools and the curriculum as a launching pad for success. Okay, potential public services, uh, I have, we have foster care up here. Uh, this website can be used as a home to uh, create a, a place where the community can come together and solve certain issues in their communities, uh, whether it's volunteer work or if it's uh, community projects in general. Uh, um, specifically for this given area, we came up <coughs> with this idea mostly because neither of us had any actual experience within this area, which was the below, um, near the Meridian Street area. Be, and because of this, we decided that the best way to help the, this area is for the people to choose what they really want to see improving in where they live, their own community. So this website will go beyond just petitions. It will give voice to these people. It will give voice to people who previously may not have had the best um, idea of what their government can do and what the government will do. Okay. Here's a, a rough draft of the website. Here on the front page of it, you, uh, it'll list current issues in Huntsville, Alabama that are either being voted on by the council or, or just or there should be voted on by the council. Once you click on one of, uh, one of the current issues, it will take you to a page like this. Here you can comment and give your opinion on the current issue and also vote on the issue itself. Um, also you can comment, like, and respond to other comments under the same issue itself. 
Um, so this is where the educational aspect of the website comes to play. Here, students would click on a more advanced form where they could not only comment, but also list their sources and where they got these sources from. So that this is sort of killing two birds with one stone. A, the students are becoming more influenced by their government and they're seeing how they can really participate and make a change. <coughs> and also they're applying what they learn in the classroom, such as using sources, backing up your information and stuff like that. The secondary aspect, technical, technical aspect of this website would be a GPS locator. Everyone would have to make a login page and they would have to put in their, um, they would have to put in where they live on a map basically, like a general map. So that when they vote, the, when they vote and if the council looks at it, they would see where all these complaints are coming from. So if they see that they would like better roads in certain places, they can see that, oh, these are happening more in these areas. So they really know what to target. So this GPS locator would really be useful in deciding what um, what to make happen within the community? Uh, creating the website itself is a one-time investment, which is how which makes this uh, proposal very reasonable. Um, we also would propose partnering with the local news to make sure all information that is on the website is accurate and uh, and. Um, That's too much of a softball question, right there. So I'll let it go. <laughs> attempt to be accurate <laughs> in school uh, and also work with schools to make a curriculum for it to uh, integrate it into schools, integrate the website into schools. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hello, my name is Chelsea Robinson from Lee High School. In conclusion, we would like to thank the Chamber of Commerce, along with Ad Train and Lee High School and Randolph School for giving us this wonderful opportunity to present our ideas to improve and better our community. This has been a great experience to work and gain guidance from our great leaders. Thank you so much. Are there any questions? Chelsea, we do have questions. Mayor, you want to go first? Yeah, Ms. Robinson, can you sing like your mother? <laughs> it's very good to see you here. Thank you for coming and thank, thank everybody for their efforts. Well, we do have questions. You're not getting off that easy. <laughs> Hans, you going to answer them? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Hans, if you'll introduce yourself, I know I ate lunch with you the other day. Right. Uh, my name is Hans Michalik, and I'm a junior at Randolph School. And where are you from? Okay, technically I'm from Germany, and I'm just doing my exchange here. And so, just, just to make the kind of a bit, a bit personal, it has been a great week, <coughs> a great experience to see all that happen. Just sideline. I'm glad you're enjoying Huntsville, and we certainly welcome you. Okay, the, the first question is, uh, um, what are you asking the city council for? Just partnership? Are you asking us for money, or what's the ask? Uh, basically, to think of other ideas and maybe see a good idea in it that might be uh, interesting to realize, and then maybe even uh, cooperate with the specific group that thought about this idea and actually realize it. Yeah, I think there's lots of great ideas, and that, that'll be the first question we'll have to come up with is how much it's going to cost and wh what the benefits are. But I think we're headed that right path, and, and, and I do appreciate everybody's good ideas. Um, how would we judge it? How would we know this has been successful? Say we go with one of your ideas and we uh, um, try to put video games in school. How will we know we've done a good job? By people using it? By uh, will grades go up? Or what do you think we should judge it on? guess uh, for, for the um, educational things there are different ways how to judge it. I mean one way is always uh, whether the grades go up or not. Yeah. Uh, basically I think they would. But maybe the specific <coughs> have, uh, better ideas. So you might <coughs> want to take a shot at that one? <laughs> Own ideas. Um, well specifically for video games uh, in our presentation we talked about different schools who have like implemented this. Like in, uh, with Quest to Learn they saw improvement in like systems learning and overall like um, improvement could be seen in grades and participation in classes and just enthusiasm about learning in general okay good good and Jameer and Nalish on the web Jamar I'm sorry um, Jamar the city has a pretty good web website in my opinion which I'm an old guy so y'all may not think it's very good um, is there a way to work your website into the city's website or do we need to have a whole different uh, a different site what do you think should we use the city's one or should we build a whole new one well um, 
Keep in mind, nobody up here knows what the internet is. <laughs> so our model has several differences. Um, just on a fundamental level, one of the great, one of the big ideas that we had was having the council or even the mayor look at our the proposals that the people put out. Mm -hmm. So we have differences from Imagine Huntsville, which is the website. Um, could they be? Of course, we could add that to the website. As not, I'm not a, I'm not really a software engineer, so I'm not exactly sure how. And we, we don't expect you to be in 11th grade. Or <laughs> but um, if that would definitely work. Of course. Okay. And, well, and also, but just to keep in mind that since we want to integrate into schools, uh, it has to be aesthetically pleasing for students. You know, because we want it to. You want the students to grasp it and actually use the website. Uh, from the heart and not from just, oh, I have to do it in school, so. Right, right, and that's why we're asking your opinion, because you're going to be the people using it, more or less, yeah? Yeah. Um, and we do appreciate you, and probably if the public were to vote right now, they would put y'all up here and put us out in the audience and <laughs> give us a word. Uh, Mr. Brother? Mr. Kling. Uh, if I could ask a question. Um, great ideas, and I like the idea of, the, the, you know, identifying the need for the Bridging the gap between the public and the elected officials, the voter turnout, you know, as, as was mentioned. Um, what, uh, what can we be doing better? Are, are everybody up here has town meetings, open office hours, uh, we're on the internet, uh, this meeting is being televised, and uh, agendas are out there. Uh, I'm not, this isn't stumping you or something like that, but what can we do better to try to try to reach out to folks we even have a a city city hall television channel there are you know events in the community that are publicized and then there are uh, video of certain events concerts in the park and you know speeches and stuff like that but what uh, what's the extra step that we could take because uh, uh, the voter turnout you're right it's uh, it's very bad and we have a this is a military community a lot of people lost our lives and they put their necks on the line so we do have this this freedom and it's not being taken advantage of well uh, one thing that me and my partner for the uh, government side we really believe that uh, that it starts with, with education and that's why the website would be integrated with education because then it, it could start as a pilot for the other people in Huntsville example say uh, kids wanted a different type of lunch for school right so they use the website to petition that, and it goes through, through the ranks, and, the, and uh, you guys vote, say you guys voted on it, and they change something. They would go home and tell their parents and say, oh, hey, we got this changed city-wise, not just in our school. This is something that we got changed. And then that would trickle out, and, uh, and people would just pick it up. I mean, I think you, you have to, a lot of people have to do it start off doing it before they realize that oh this is actually a really good idea and that these people are here for us and that we can communicate with them about the issues that we have in our community or that they have in their community okay yeah. great ideas great energy mr culver yeah if i could just piggyback off of that a little bit um the district that i'm so blessed to represent is one of the largest districts being district five in land mass and now also again in population and we're having to go all over the district to, because it's such a large district, people who live in one part of the district's concerns may be differ, different from other individuals. So I'm having to go all over the district. When I say all over the district, our last town hall meeting was in Limestone County, which is in the city of Huntsville at Old Cobblestone. And uh, uh, that's probably 15, 18 miles from here. <laughs> But I like your idea of having the technology so that I can get their concerns from right here. And uh, absolutely, they can tell me what their interests are, and I can present it to the council, and we can vote on it, uh, not just for District 5, but for all of our districts. I think that is just a great idea. So thank you all very much. Dr. Robinson. I think everybody's asked some really good questions about your presentation. I'd like to ask you just a, a general question. It sounds like you've had an opportunity to have a lot of a really inside look at the city, and you've been doing a lot of thinking about the city. So what's the most surprising thing? What, what surprised you the most, or what, what was the most important lesson that you learned from this, your takeaway? To be the first one at the mayor's table at lunch, right? <laughs> 
it's not how old all the city council members look to you. Well, 13.9% voted. Uh, that I mean, that's low. Yeah. And that kind of, that was shocking for me. And I thought that Huntsville had a, a greater voice, you know, right. when it comes to their government. But, you know, <clears throat> so that was my lesson I learned. Good. Yeah, um, for me, I think it was, so I've never... My family, um, it's sort of not that great because we don't really vote for all these city stuff and we usually just go for more of a national scale. And what was really surprising to me is how much impact the city really has on its citizens because I never really, whenever you really think about the government, you always think of either nationally or sometimes on a state level. So for me, seeing how much dynamic, how much impact and influence the city government had was really cool. Thank you. Anyone else? Please, um, Mel. One thing I found that was very interesting was how much of an impact youth have on the environment. Like, I asked the question, you know, what do companies look for when they come to a new city? For example, like, you know, we have Adran here, and we have, like, all these different um, companies here. And so I was very surprised to learn that, you know, they, they told me that they look at the public school, and they say, what kind of workers will we have if we move to this city? And they'll move to Huntsville, and, you know, they'll see that we're an engineering city, and we have schools like Grissom and Randolph and Lee High School, and they'll see, you know, we'll get these kind of workers, so, you know, we'll decide whether or not we need to come here or not, and, you know, that's why we have a lot of great companies here in Huntsville. That's what, yeah. Thank you. Very good. <coughs> um, what I've learned and was really surprising to me was the amount of influence the city government has on inviting and bringing companies into this area. Uh, being part of the economic element and also being a high school student, I'd never considered, you know, how businesses move to other regions, how they decide where to expand. And upon looking into it more, I was surprised to find that the majority of it comes from the city level. And the city governments like you um, try to attract companies to come here. And that is, um, I didn't know that before. And I found that really surprising that you guys uh, have that kind of influence on the city. Yes, and we're trying to provide jobs so that if you choose to, you can come back here and work and we want you back. Any other questions or comments for us? We really do appreciate you being here. It was a spectacular display, and we're very thankful. Thank you. Does anyone uh, from the public wish to address the council on this particular issue? Public hearing is now closed. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Kling, second by Dr. Robinson. Ms. Nichols, why the zoning change? Um, there is a uh, proposed use that will be moving into the uh, former Winn-Dixie Shopping Center um, area, and that particular use is not permitted under the Neighborhood Business C1 district, so that is uh, why the property owner as well as the adjacent property owners have all agreed to uh, the proposed rezoning change to C4 and that will keep the zoning consistent as well. Okay and we need to know what the use is. The use is a uh, office warehouse uh, type use. Um, it's an indoor storage facility that will also have an office component as well and those are only permitted in our, in our highway business C4 and higher uh, zoning designations. Thank you. Further discussion? Dr. Robinson? I have two questions. One is, what's the, what's the significant difference between C1 and C4? Um, C1 is mainly for your smaller, more service neighborhood type things. Um, C4 does provide a few more uh, uses that are not permitted in C1, such as your larger apparel stores, grocery more grocery stores, and you can also have um, your office warehouse type uh, uses, whereas those are not permitted in C1. Also, um, there is some C4 that is located on Winchester Road, and I can show that to you guys. The, uh, when Dick, the, excuse me, the public shopping center that's located close to Homer Nance and Winchester is also zone C4, and it's a similar uh, shopping center. faster internet we could have gotten that like a thousand times <laughs> <laughs> it has a mind of its own <laughs> okay. 
this is the current location um, of the Shields Plaza Shopping Center. The near C4 is located here. And this is the current Publix. I think it's the Flint River Shopping Plaza is located here. And this entire area is all zone C4. My second question is with regard to the, the little section that's zoned R1B right behind that, it would appear that there's no direct access to it. What happens to that little track? Um, this particular property, um, it is still owned by Habitat for Humanity. This was previously zoned mm -hmm. C1, and back in 2002, um, Habitat for Humanity actually rezoned this property from C1 to R1B in hopes of um, adding some type of residential development here, but that uh, development did not happen for access reasons. So currently, um, the property is still zoned residential, but it has no access, um, so that's something they will need to address in the future. Further comments, further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Now is the time and place for a public hearing on ordinance number 15-138, zoning newly annexed property lying north of Zert Road and on the east and west sides of Arnett Road to Residence 1B District. This was set March 12th at the 2015 regular council meeting. Ms. Nichols. This property is newly annexed land. This was annexed back in January uh, 2015. This property is approximately 2.09 acres. It's located on the east and west sides of Arnett Road, as well as it's also west of, um, excuse me, north of Zert Road, which is located to the south area here. It's currently a single family detached dwelling and that use will remain. The proposed zoning is Residence 1B District, which is consistent with the other homes on the west side of Arnett Road. And here's the property on Google Earth. This is the property here. Um, and you see several properties located south that are west of Arnett Road. They're also zoned R1B. And you also have the Cambridge subdivision that's located on the east side of Arnett. Thank you. Does anyone from the public wish to address council on this particular issue? Seeing none, the public hearing is now closed. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Dr. Robinson. Discussion? <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We have no public hearings to be set. We do have communications from the public. When I call your name, please come to the microphone and address the council. You'll have three minutes. Uh, Ms. Jackie Reed. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. I want to thank you for allowing public input always, and I want to thank you for the smooth operations of how you handle the city council meetings. No matter how hard we are on the issues, you seem to handle the situation well. I was at a county commission meeting Wednesday, and the officials were showing themselves very upset. I couldn't believe what I was seeing and watching at a meeting, so I want to compliment you all for the way you handle your meetings, no matter what. Several issues of concern. At the last meeting, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't know if this is true, and maybe you can answer me when I sit down. Oh, I understand an employee tonight. There's many issues on here on the budget. They were going to try to borrow enough money to send me to Mars. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Thank the good Lord. Anyway, $500,000 was funded through the art museum. We're still on Stone Middle School trying to develop that property up there. $500,000? Do you know how much road money that would be? Anyway, keep on doing it. Keep on. I hope Stone looks better than City Hall. I understand Lightning struck City Hall last week and shut the place down and lit up the whole street. You know what? There's a message there. I hope you all pray and hear what I'm trying to tell you. Do the right thing for the right reasons for all the people, not part of the people. Why in the world? And the city weighs, weighs in, and Huntsville's on the right path. Here's, here's the paper's view. Buying right on the right path with buying Memorial Parkway, $197,000. Are you all going tonight into that's budget buy everything that looks bad in this city? And on it, please, you can't afford it. 
$197,000 for Reed Hardware. Why didn't community development write them up, charge them for tearing it down? That's what you do to the people's homes in this city. I mean, I'm just preaching to the you all, maybe to the public. But when somebody don't do their job on their homes, you ride them up, you go out there and tear it down and charge them eight to $10,000. Why don't you do that on these commercial and the big money boys? I guess I don't understand. It's two different situations out here. We're working for two different people. Um, <coughs> several budget items, I'd like for you to explain quite a few of them, 15A through I tonight. Um, I'm still at odds with with the good school superintendent on tearing down Butler and busing kids all the way across this city. The buses are everywhere, all day, everywhere. And I guess I'll always be on the mayor for tearing down Aquatic Center and Scruggs Center. You too, as long as I live, will never let that go. Butler School shutting down, Scruggs Center and Aquatic Center. As long as I'm standing and as long as my mouth will open, you're going to hear about it. Anyway, the roads in this city. Ms. Reed, your time's up. Do you need extra time? Need extra minute. You You're going to give it to me? We'll give you a minute if you'd like it. I'll hurry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Annex in Morgan County across the river. We need to hear it all about the money, and it's going to cost some money, I know. Thank you. I'm sorry I missed a meeting the other day. I wish I'd have been here. Um, there's one thing. I think Lee did a good job, and Randolph did a good job. I'm not for anybody voting on any computer. It's all I can do to trust the hands that serve the system. We're not for that. They could help you all. I could help them help you all. Do the, do the roads, do the right thing for the right reason. They could get a computer system set up and tell you all how to operate right for the government, for all the people. I would like to help them, but p voting, no. We got problems already with the voting system. I want everybody to wake up at election time. Thank you very, very much. Have a good weekend. Ms. Yes, Reed. I do love you. That woman told me not to tell you that. Bye. Before you sit down, I was unsure about your first question. You said 500000 from the art museum to Stone Middle School. No, could, sorry, could you go to the microphone? We're not going to be able to answer it if we don't understand it. Maybe I misunderstood it, too. But at the last meeting, there was $500,000. Who was that given to? Maybe y'all can explain that to me. It's a park. Through the art museum. Through the art museum? I don't recall anything like that. Are they that. not going to do something up at Stone Middle School? Uh, Mr. President? No, we, we uh, there was a park. I think it's a it's a $500,000 for a park. That, that oh, the city. Performing Arts Park. That's what it was. It was named oh, yeah. It. Okay. okay. That's models? exactly what I thought it was. But it's nothing You float do. the money through them to get up there. No, 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 no. Well, that's, no, well, that's no the way I looked at it. Okay. <laughs> You're still trying to develop Stone Middle. But now the art museum's got involved, so... No, ma'am. No, it wasn't the art museum. But we'll, uh, I'll, I'll find exactly what we did and we'll go over it together. Mr. But, yeah, Mr. Kling. Ms. Reed, it is a park with uh, possibly a gazebo, not an amphitheater. Uh, it would be used uh, for some open air concerts. But I think most of the money, uh, as I understand it, is actually going to be for a parking lot. With some well, whatever. Just let the public know what you're going to do with $500,000. I sure would like for everybody to know. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Davis, can you further help Ms. Reed? Yeah, let me kind of clarify. Last council meeting, we had a design contract. Uh, <clears throat> I think the amount was about $35,000 uh, to design two things. Uh, it's designing a public parking area along Clinton Avenue and then an open grass plaza area that we were calling a performing arts park. Um, might have been a little too clever of a name, but it's, it's pretty much a grass area uh, to just have community gatherings. Uh, and I think during that conversation, someone asked what the estimated budget would be, and we said approximately half a million dollars for the construction of that infrastructure. Yes, thank you. Everybody good with that? All right. Uh, Clarence Johnson, Dr. Clarence Johnson. Is Dr. Johnson here? Um, Miss Julia, Julie Baker Owen. Miss Owen here. Miss Sherry Saunders. Ms. Saunders, if you would give your address for the record, please. 
Yes, my address is 6231 East Upper River Road, uh, Somerville, Alabama, and that is in Montgomery. I'm, I'm sorry, Morgan County. Long day. Apologize. Um, I apologize that uh, Miss Julie uh, Baker Owen was unable to uh, be with us this evening. I had planned on her to uh, show up and give a speech as to how the help we received. Um, from I, I'm assuming uh, Councilman Will Culver and um, certainly Joe Girardes with Huntsville Utilities for assisting her and getting her uh, utilities situation taken care of and uh, providing that young family electricity. So I, I, I do appreciate everyone who uh, helped her and it's unfortunate she was unable to be here this evening to speak for herself. Um, but now secondly, um, I must bring to your attention the oversight by this council of not including me in our organization, the Committee to Protect the Homeless, for participation with the Human Relations Commission meetings Mayor Battle's office held recently. In September of 2014, this council and Mayor Battle were made aware of our existence in this city when I came before this council, Mayor Battle, the District Attorney's Office, and Chief Lewis Morris of the Huntsville Police Department to discuss the investigation I was leading into the circumstances surrounding the death of a local homeless man named Mark Pridmore. Although I have limited knowledge of the agenda of the Human Relations Commission, I do understand that it would be similar to the community-based initiative I am sponsoring through the CPH called the Citizens Review Board. Respectfully and officially, I petition Mayor Battle's office to include myself and the CPH in all future meetings of the Human Relations Commission and that I be granted access to any data already collected. Soon, I will request negotiations and meetings with this council, Mayor Battle's office, and all other, other relevant parties to discuss integration of the Citizens Review Board within our community. This initiative came into existence in 2010. I began investigating civil rights violations and other employment-related matters in Huntsville in December of 2009 while employed at Huntsville Hospital. During my discussions and investigations with citizens of this city, I have found this to be prevalent. Our police department is no longer trusted to correctly handle investigations of itself. I'm convinced the only and fair non-partial investigation by appointed citizens, excuse me, let me start over. Our police department is no longer trusted to correctly handle investigations of itself. I'm convinced. Ms. Saunders, your time's up. Do you need an extra minute? One more minute, sir. Okay. Council members, is that okay? Go ahead, please. I'm convinced that only a fair, non-partial investigation by appointed citizens in a grand jury-type setting can begin to rehabilitate the damage done to community relations and trust. Our citizens must be given the right to oversee the actions and behaviors of these agencies, uh, these agencies, police, hospitals, courts, jails, fire, HIMSI, and public utilities, because it is through these agencies that misconduct and corruption most closely affects our citizens. My 30-day waiting period is over on Saturday, April 25th. This Monday, April 27th, I will begin the re I will begin the request for official documents and data from Huntsville Police Department collected info on its arrest, complaints by citizens, and an overview of neighborhood assignments for patrol officers to establish if a bias toward North Huntsville exists. I am researching for comparable statistical findings by comparison to the issues of authoritative abuse and civil rights violations in respect to those like mm. identified circumstances within Ferguson, Missouri. Ma'am, your time's up. Thank you. Mr. Rus Mr. Rusty Lozell. Uh, Rusty Loisell, uh, South Huntsville for the homeless veterans and citizens of Huntsville. As you all know, we have our fair share of low income citizens as well as homeless veterans who are routinely rousted and mistreated, not only by police, but also by housing, sanitation, health and welfare officials. It is not only a few bad cops that have a hatred for them, 
but they are talked down to, dismissed with prejudice, and denied services that are readily available to you and me. It is not only the public servants that treat them badly, the small mom and pop stores that overcharge them for supplies because they know if a homeless complains, all they have to do is call a cop and the homeless person will go to jail even though he or she was the victim of the theft. The police are not perceived as impartial neutral enforcers of the law. Instead of contributing to the solution of the problems plaguing society, some police are thought to exacerbate them. The tensions that exist between the police and some citizens reduce the likelihood of any cooperation. There's a desperate need for a citizen's review board here in Huntsville. This is not a new idea. It is in place working in numerous cities throughout the U.S., such as Orange County, St. Paul, Portland, Rochester, Tucson, Flint, Berkeley, Minneapolis, San Francisco, Jacksonville, and many others. Too many times we've heard of the mistreatment of those less fortunate. If our public servants were held accountable and punished for their bad actions, just like our homeless are unjustly punished, maybe the mistreatment would stop. Right now, we have a very uneven judicial system. The police and the judges are on the same team. Whatever a police says happens is gospel to a judge's ears. Very seldom does a judge rule in favor of the accused against an officer. We have witnessed destruction of evidence, verbal abuse, intimidation, false arrest, stolen property after arrest. <clears throat> when do our public servants stand accountable for their actions? <clears throat> our tax dollars pay those salaries. Like it or not, you all work for us. If our citizens are held accountable for their actions, so should our public servants. Thank you. We're now at eight Huntsville utility items. We have four Huntsville utility items. Uh, 8A is a resolution authorizing approval for the purchase of a dehumidifier for the Lincoln Dallas water plant. B is a resolution authorized approval for the purchase of two media filters for the South Parkway water treatment plant. C is a resolution authorizing approval for the purchase of contract labor for the Mo mobile natural gas leak survey. And D is a resolution authorized approval for the purchase of Microsoft Enterprise licensing. Council members, are there any of those items you'd like to hold? The chair moves to consolidate approval of 8A through D. Second. Second by Mr. Kling. All those in favor of consolidation approval say aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We're now at board appointments voted on. The first, we have a resolution to reappoint Betsy Lowe to the Museum Board of the City of Huntsville for a term to expire May 9, 2021. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Kling, second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carries. We have a resolution to reappoint Mike Segrist to the Industrial Development Board of the City of Huntsville for a term to expire May 27, 2021. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Kling, second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Three is a resolution to reappoint Richard Crunkleton to the Museum Board of the City of Huntsville for a term to expire May 9, 2021. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Dr. Robinson. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Four is a resolution to reappoint Hunley Batts Sr. to the Industrial Development Board of the City of Huntsville for a term to expire May 27, 2021. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Culver. Second by Dr. Robinson. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. <clears throat> Five is a resolution to reappoint Mace Neal to the Bingo Review Committee, District 1 representative for a term to expire April 8, 2017. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Culver, second by Dr. Robinson. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. On six, Dr. Showers had uh, communicated through Mr. Culver that, that he would like to hold the Huntsville Health Care Authority appointments. I, I don't think it's a wise idea, but I need to know what the council thinks. I, I think we have four people here we can vote. Does anybody disagree? Or? I'd like to move forward. Mr. Kling, are you okay with moving forward? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Ms. Culver, you? you. I, I would like to honor Dr. Shower's request. However, I, at this point, 
I'm not sure if it's going to make a difference. Okay. Well, then we'll move forward. Mr. President. Mr. Kling. Uh, and, of course, we're going to go ahead and take care of things, but I think we need to get some clarification from the city attorney as far as uh, how quickly uh, the council can react or make a motion uh, on the hospital board because I believe their authority in the nominating process actually comes from the board itself. Is, is that correct, Mr. Jofrian, or am I wrong? As I mentioned at the last council meeting, the health care authority submits three names in nomination to the city council <laughs> for each position, and the council is required to select from among those three for each position. So hypothetically, and, you know, it's just water the, under the dam, we could have acted when we when we received the names from the health care board, we could take a motion at the next meeting. Is that correct? You could, but it is the council's policy through its bylaws to introduce at one meeting and, and vote at the next. Okay. You okay with that, Mr. Kling? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Six is a resolution to appoint Dr. Amit Aurora to the Health Care Authority of the City of Huntsville, Place 8, for a term to expire April 8, 2017. I move approval. Second. Motion by Dr. Robinson, second by Mr. Kling. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Seven is a resolution to reappoint Mike Goodman to the Health Care Authority of the City of Huntsville Place 7 for a term to expire April 12, 2021. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Eight is a resolution to reappoint Nathaniel Hudson, the Community Development Citizens Advisory Council, for a term to expire April 14, 2018. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Nine is a resolution to reappoint Dietra Campbell Edwards, the Community Development Advisory Council, for a term to expire April 14, 2018. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Ten is a resolution to reappoint Alex Adams to the Community Development Advisory Council for a term to expire April 14, 2018. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It carries. We're now at board appointment nominations. Ms. Robinson, Dr. Robinson. Um, I move, I, I nominate Missy Hanks for an appointment to the Madison County 310 Board for a term to expire April 2021. Thank you very much. Are there any other nominations tonight? Moving forward, we're at 10, approval of expenditures. 10A is resolution authorizing expenditures for payment. Does anyone have the... Yeah, Mr. President. Ms. Kling. Uh, I would like to move for payment of vouchers in the amount of $12,285,850.06. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Kling, second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Mr. Kling, do you have a finance committee report? Uh, Mr. President, uh, yeah, Mr. Taylor, finance director, is at the podium, so I'm assuming he has some good words to tell us tonight. I just have a quick report for you, uh, council members and mayor, on our uh, recent uh, debt activities. On tonight's agenda, uh, item 15H, you have an $8.2 uh, million dollar uh, ordinance to issue debt, which is refinancing the exact same amount of debt uh, the city already has outstanding with the owners of the TIF EUL site, the Redstone Gateway site. Uh, our contract with them requires that when the revenues from that site are sufficient uh, to support a, a certain amount of city debt, then we are to use that revenue to um, issue city debt and pay them off. They have financed that portion of the project cost to date. So uh, we will be uh, asking you to issue that on uh, 15H, and as Mr. Russell already said, it requires unanimous consent. We have a larger bond issue that we're working on for our two capital plans. It was in the budget. We've talked about it a number of times. Uh, it's about $70.7 .7 million that we need to fund the projects in those two plans. Uh, we had expected uh, to have priced it uh, a couple of times by now and be presenting to you an ordinance to actually issue that debt. Uh, but the market conditions have not been such that we it's been in our best interest to do it. So we have uh, postponed that again. We do uh, plan to, within the next 30 days, uh, hopefully sooner than that, uh, be in the market with a competitive transaction. And I'll just continue to keep you updated. Uh, but we certainly want the best deal for the city's dollars. Uh, and uh, that's where we are on that. So there's not actually an ordinance associated with that, but just know that it's in process and coming. So that's all I have. Uh, Mr. Kling. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mayor Battle. Uh, this Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this weekend is Panoply. Uh, we would suggest that everybody go out and see the celebration of the arts out, out there um, at <clears throat> Panoply, and uh, we are all hoping, uh, hoping beyond hopes that we have no rain. Uh, <laughs> It seems like it's a tradition that panoply comes in, rain comes in with it, but this time we're going to try to do something different and have panoply with no rain. Um, to all of you, uh, we have had um, uh, a happening um, last weekend was Earth Day at, um, at, at the John, at the Hayes Park and all of our uh, landscape, parks and recreation, uh, public works people were out there. Mr. Hatsfield was out there. Joy McKee was out there uh, doing traffic and did a great job with, uh, with our Earth Day celebration out at John Hayes Park. Uh, tomorrow is Earth Day, or Saturday is Earth Day celebration at the U.S. Space and Rocket <coughs> Center. And um, there is a free working in the garden event, 1.30 to 2.30 Saturday at Barrett Museum. I will be at um, Ms. doing Mrs. Battle's direction, working in my own garden uh, at the Battle House. Um, one other thing that um, I would mention to you, we've had a celebration in the Battle household. Uh, first, first grandchild was born uh, on Monday, five pounds, 11 ounces. He's at Huntsville Hospital. And doing very well, and parents are uh, doing well too. So um, it's been a great day, a great week for the Battle family. Thank you. Congratulations, Mayor. Mr. Culver. I think this is what's called making an entrance. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Robin, Dr. Robinson, <laughs> Council McLean, for your assistance. Um, just a couple of things. I am also emceeing one of the events um, at the Panoply, and I'm certainly uh, looking forward to that. Um, the young lady that was here, and I wanted to say this in her presence, I'm not so sure if that particular young lady is one of the ladies that I helped personally through Community Action Partnership. I did refer her to Community Action Partnership. And if I could just give them uh, just a good plug in. Uh, as you all know, we get monies through the federal government through our LIHEAP fund. And what we do, we <clears> help <throat> residents with heating and cooling, heating in the wintertime during the cold months, and cooling in the summertime. So we're going to be gearing up for another round uh, of help um, in June, which uh, we'll be getting into the you know hotter parts of the summer. But this program, when we talk about enhancing the quality of life, uh, this is, to me, is the foundation of that. Uh, people who otherwise need help, even <coughs> absent those particular times, are able to get help through uh, utilities, mm -hmm. they're able to get help through housing, <coughs> um, and they're able to get help through other uh, services that the community agency provides. So. Um, at some point in time, the community agency needs help, and <clears throat> we're going to be reaching out uh, for some help about uh, mid-year if all goes well. So uh, that's all I have, Mr. President, and thank you so kindly. Thank you, Mr. Culver. Mr. Kling. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Well, uh, I guess it's springtime and everybody's got their cars out because this seems to be the uh, last couple of weeks where there's been a lot of uh, neighborhood traffic uh, issues uh, that uh, have been addressed uh, or in the process of being addressed by the traffic engineering department. Um, the police department and traffic engineering have done a great job of resolving what's been a problem with uh, access of uh, traffic going into the arsenal gate in the morning. Uh, a person had contacted me a couple of weeks ago concerning that problem and uh, getting in touch with both uh, uh, Dan Sanders and the uh, police department. They have worked together and the report I got uh, uh, yesterday was that uh, uh, the work was uh, substantially complete and that uh, the uh, people who were driving saw a big improvement. And the party who had originally contacted me wanted me to pass along her accolades uh, 
especially to the uh, traffic engineering department, but also to the police department for their good work uh, in helping with that uh, morning traffic problem. Also, I appreciate the time and trouble uh, that traffic engineering spent uh, looking into the uh, traffic problem, cut through traffic, speeding traffic uh, between in the Madison Heights neighborhood between Governor's Drive and Huntsville High School and uh, the communication that they did with the residents of the neighborhood are very much appreciated. And we got a new problem that uh, has uh, resurfaced and I think the uh, traffic engineering department uh, has already started to work on it. Uh, uh, they've had some contacts uh, in the McDonald School neighborhood uh, around Bennerton and Macaulay. Uh, a lot of congestion taking place because the school uh, has actually increased uh, in number of students to over 600 and there are more cars and more congestion uh, there and uh, appreciate the uh, quickness that the um, traffic engineering department has uh, uh, jumped on that and made contact with the appropriate personnel from the uh, school system and uh, working uh, to see what they can do uh, concerning that problem and uh, that is all I have, Mr. President, um, and uh, certainly want everybody to be sure to drive safely uh, at Panoply this weekend because it's going to be a lot of traffic and a lot of people here and uh, people from out of town that will be coming into Huntsville. So I think it's going to be a great weekend, and uh, I share the mayor's uh, sentiments about uh, we want to have good weather for this weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kling. Dr. Robinson. We have a lot of great things going on in Huntsville uh, in the coming weeks, and we've had a lot of great things going on in the past few weeks. One of those was opening day at the ballparks, and Steve Ivey and his team organized a great opening day. Um, the mayor and John Hamilton and I got to tag along with Steve and visit some of the parks. I got to see the, the mayor uh, pitch the opening ball, even underhanded at the softball, on the softball uh, field. Um, so we have a, we have a multi-talented mayor. Uh, we also held a, a, our, the, a meeting of the South Huntsville Business Association, and the mayor there came and did something I've never seen him do before. He just stood in front of a whiteboard, picked up a marker, and he started drawing, and he drew the map of South Huntsville and where everything was going to go. I, I took a picture of it. It was, it was really a fascinating depiction of all the opportunities we have in South Huntsville and how that ties into the bigger plan for Huntsville. Uh, it, was, it was really an impressive um, presentation, and thank you, Mayor, for doing that. And Shane Davis was there with us also to answer questions after the mayor left and, and fielded that very well. We have exciting things happening. One of those exciting things is uh, that we uh, unveiled a sign at Grissom High School, where, which will be the site of the new Bailey Cove Library, and celebrated raising a million dollars in private funds, which will then be added to the $2 million pledged by the city and the $2 million pledged by the county county for a total of $5 million toward the $8 million that's going to be needed to build that facility. So we're 60% of the way there, and that was really an exciting milestone to reach. And the sign is now there, so it really makes that project real. If you drive by, you'll see it. We also unveiled the, the Ditto, the, the long-range plan for Ditto, and I commend Michelle Jordan and Dennis Madsen and all of the planning staff who have been working so hard with the big picture project all year long, and now we're starting to see these plans come out as a result of the, of the community conversations. And um, the Ditto plan is really exciting. It preserves the recreational nature of Ditto and will really create a wonderful regional community asset, and I look forward to hearing more about that opportunity as things uh, emerge there. Um, Mr. Kling and I and the mayor had the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. on the chamber trip. Uh, the chamber staff, I see Wendy Kirk is here from the chamber. The, the chamber staff really did a remarkable job planning that trip. Mike Ward told me it's the 29th chamber trip that they've done, so they've had a little bit of practice. But it was a, a great opportunity for us to, to spend time with Senator Shelby and Senator Sessions with Congressman Brooks um, to hear briefings from NASA and folks in aviation and and uh, Department of Defense um, th things that really impact uh, our economy here in Huntsville so a great opportunity um, 
And we have some great things coming up on April 25th. Uh, we mentioned Panably, but the day will actually start at 9 o'clock with the ribbon cutting for the Green Power Car at Grissom. And they will have Green Power races all day at Grissom. Uh, I'm going to come for the, the ribbon cutting, then head over to MC Panoply at the Jubilee stage, and then head back to Grissom for the Green Power uh, Awards ceremony. Uh, Green, uh, Huntsville is home to the Green Power Program for the nation. So this is really an opportunity for, de- for an exhibition to demonstrate what the Green power races are all about high school middle school and elementary school um, and then on April 30th I'm going to have my second town hall meeting at 6:30 at the Bailey Cove library where we will talk some more with the public about uh, the plans for ditto as well as some of the other exciting opportunities we have in Huntsville and just do a general discussion of, uh, of what's going on so y'all come for that and that will also be an opportunity for people to pick up the supplies that they will need for the um, the South Huntsville cleanup effort that we're going to make the following Saturday. We have had a tremendous response and many thanks to Joy McKee and her staff. They've been so responsive and so helpful. I don't think Joy knew what she was asking for when she told our various uh, neighborhood uh, leaders to uh, let her know if they needed if if they needed any help, and they have certainly responded. And uh, Mr. Hatfield and Miss McKee have been taking those uh, those emails as I get them. So we're looking forward to seeing our neighborhoods really, really sparkle with that cleanup effort on May 2nd. That's all I have. Thank you. Council members, I, I'm trying to set personnel hearings for May 7th in the afternoon. If you could, I, I think I've heard from uh, Dr. Robinson and Mr. Kling. Mr. Culver, you can check your schedule and I'll get with Dr. Showers and we'll see if we can set those up. Uh, so keep in mind in May, we're gonna have to hear at least maybe four to five personnel hearings. So I'm gonna need some available dates from you. We have no unfinished business items. We do have one new business items for introduction. I have a resolution to reappoint Sybil Denise Cleveland as a, a judge, municipal court judge here in Huntsville. And it would be at a salary of grade 23, step 13, which currently is $132,620.80. This is for introduction. We'll vote on it at our next regular meeting. We're now at 15 new business items for consideration or action. Uh, there are many. Um, the first several all are dealing uh, somewhat with the same thing. So the chair is going to hold 15 A through H, and then we'll try to figure out how best to, to wade through those. Are there any other items you'd like to hold? Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to have uh, 15 U as an umbrella voted on separately. Okay. Are there any other items? Which item was that, Mr. President? 15 U. U. Okay. And could I please hold 15 HH? HH. Are there any other items? Keep in mind 15 double D has been deleted. So right now I have 15 A through H held, 15 U, and 15 double H. Hearing none, 15 I is an ordinance to amend budget ordinance number 14-665 by changing appropriated funding for various departments and funds. J is a resolution authorizing acceptance of donations. K is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a special employment agreement between the city of Huntsville and Vena Call. L is a resolution authorizing the mayor to agreement to low bidders as outlined in the tax summary of bids for acceptance. M is an ordinance declaring certain equipment surplus and be sold at public auction. N is a request to advertise and fill vacant equipment technician two position at a higher than minimum salary if needed. O is a request for authorization to advertise and fill one landscape maintenance lead worker position. P is a resolution authorizing a clerk treasurer invoke first commercial bank letter credit number 83-12-51-823 for Grand Lake subdivision. Q is a resolution authorizing a clerk treasurer invoke first commercial bank letter credit number 83-12-51-837 for Cambridge subdivision. R is a resolution authorizing the clerk treasurer invoke Bank Corp South Bank letter credit number 36200811842 for Legendwood subdivision phase four. S is a resolution authorizing the clerk treasurer invoke Worthington Bank letter credit number 2013-045 for the cottages in Indian Lake subdivision. T is a resolution authorizing mayor to a revocable license agreement among the city of Huntsville, Alabama, Madison County, Alabama, and Le- Legends Holding LLC. V is a resolution authorizing the city attorney to settle the claim of Deborah Civitan. 
W is a resolution authorizing mayor to an agreement for the preliminary engineering right of way acquisition and construction between the state of Alabama and the city of Huntsville regarding project IAR 0420000008, project reference number 10006356, construct an access road from the existing Greenbrier Road to Polaris North property line to benefit Polaris Industries Inc. and the Target Distribution Center in the city of Huntsville. X is a resolution authorizing mayor to agreement between the city of Huntsville and Standard and Associates for the professional services to develop and administer written and practical examinations for the position of fire captain. Y is a resolution authorizing mayor to agreement between the city of Huntsville and Standard and Associates for the professional services to develop and administer written and practical examinations for the position of fire driver engineer. Z is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute modification number one to the agreement between the city of Huntsville and McCord Construction for periodic bid for sanitary sewer bore items 2014, project number 6514 SP16. Double A is a resolution authorizing the mayor to agreement between the city of Huntsville and Barge, Wagner, Sumner, and Kamen, Inc. for engineering services for Sewell property mega site certification project number 6515 SP27. Double B is a resolution authorizing the mayor to agreement between the city of Huntsville and the low bidder Reed Contracting Service, Inc. for Greenbrier Park. Way phase three A base bid and option number one project number sixty five thirteen R D zero two and now dot project number I A R zero four two zero 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 eight. Double C is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute modification number two to the agreement between the city of Huntsville and Garver LLC for Greenbrier Parkway phase three from I-565 to north of Old Highway 20, project number 6513RD02, and ALDEP project number IAR-042-000-008. Double E is a resolution authorized mayor in agreement between the city of Huntsville and Garver LLC for engineering construction administration services for 2015 water pollution control sanitary sewer rehabilitation project number 6515 SP 34. Double F is a resolution authorized mayor to special employment agreement between the city of Huntsville and Barry Priest. Double G is a resolution adopting the public transit title six program. The chair moves for consolidation approval of 15 I through 15 T 15 V through 15 double C, 15 double E, through 15 double G. Second, second by the, Mr. Culver, the chair has moved for consolidation approval. Mr. Culver seconded it. All those in favor, consolidation approval signified by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, it carries. Council members, I believe 15 A and G are dealing with the same item. What I'm gonna put 15 A on the floor and get Mr. Taylor to explain all of them. And then we'll vote on 15A, and if that passes, then we'll consolidate and approve 15B through G. Ms. Taylor, is that okay with you? Can you? Sure. Okay, so uh, so 15A is a resolution to approve the amended City of Huntsville 1990 Capital Improvement Plan for fiscal years 2015 and 2024. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Dr. Robinson. Mr. Taylor. Council members, what <clears throat> these seven items represent is uh, essentially three actions that we're asking you to take. Uh, first of all, we've mentioned that we've got a bond issue that we're uh, preparing to bring to you uh, for our two capital plan projects, a number of roads, parks, other kinds of capital improvements in those two plans. Um, as we do every time we borrow money, uh, we certainly don't want to borrow money before we need it, but we want to uh, take advantage of market conditions when that's in the city's best interest. So uh, we need to amend our capital plans to reflect the actual borrowing schedule that we've now worked out with the departments based on the timing of when they need their money. So the $70.7 .7 million that I mentioned to you, uh, we just need to make sure that the capital plan reflects the money in the right years based on what we're about to ask you to uh, authorize in terms of new debt. Uh, the Natatorium project is the simplest uh, project for me to use as an illustration. It is in next year's capital plan. And uh, we are planning to borrow the money for it now because market conditions are right to do that and we'll need the money very soon. We won't wait till next year to borrow money for a project that's just about designed. So we need to move the natatorium from FY16 to FY15 in the plan and amend the capital plans and the budget in order to make that possible. So that's an example of the kinds of things that are taking place. There's absolutely no change in the projects that uh, the council has uh, said they want to do in the capital plans. Uh, it simply is aligning things up with our need for uh, actually borrowing money at this time. That's what A and B do, and C is the budget component that goes with that. Remember, the capital plans are just documents that express your intention to do these things in these years, but the budget is actually the authorized spending plan for this year. So we're asking you an A and B, let's tweak the plans based on what we actually plan to borrow right now and then let's amend the budget uh, as well for that FY15 figure. So that is A, B, and C. Uh, 
There may be a question yes. that's a good time to ask at this okay. point. Mr. Mr. Culver. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, what I'm hearing you say is for the natatorium that we're going to borrow this money now instead of next year. What about the debt service on that, the, the cost of, of the debt in the meantime? It's that? a very good question, Mr. Culver. The debt service uh, we had reflected, we, we typically estimate one half year's debt service in every year that we have a capital plan with a new debt issue. Uh, we're in May uh, almost now, and so there won't be any debt service uh, in fiscal year 15. So we're actually postponing the longer we wait to do a bond issue, the the later our debt service gets. So one of the amendments is actually what you just described, uh, where debt service is going to go to zero uh, in the capital plan budget for this year, which preserves cash for us and is part of our plan as well. So there's no additional cost to the city. It actually will postpone some of those costs. Okay. And that's, that is what was confusing to me because in the past yeah. we had uh, borrowed only what we need to spend right then so we can right. avoid debt service. But I get it now. It was the, the natatorium would, I see your observation, the natatorium would cost us more money in debt service one year early. But because right. we're not actually, uh, we're borrowing late enough in the year where there is no debt service. And next year it will be the same because we would have borrowed then anyway. Okay. So, right. I, I got okay. it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, in addition to that, uh, council members, uh, the other items, uh, one thing that we have instituted as part of our new uh, debt compliance policies uh, is that you establish the allocations of our money. That's a technical term that's associated with our policy. The most complicated and serious thing we do in the finance business is comply with federal regulations for the spending of tax-exempt debt, which is all of this that we're talking about. Uh, it consumes most of the hours that we have, and it's uh, something that uh, you take very seriously and that we comply with. So we're implementing uh, a policy of you officially declaring what we're going to spend the money on. It's been always part of our documents, but never in this context. Uh, and so we're asking to do that and also asking you to uh, allow us to take the take advantage of the the minimal uh, efforts that we have to take to comply. There's some things that we can do to change the funding around, which makes our compliance responsibilities much easier. It doesn't change any projects. It doesn't change how we plan to use any of the money, uh, but it is something that you need to acknowledge uh, with respect to these uh, allocations, again, a term that we have in our new policy. And that would be D through uh, H, which also amends the capital plans again, but that's a formality related to this allocation process. But everything you'll see in the amended capital plans, F and G, is the exact same projects that were in the plans last year. It's just that they appear in different columns with a different funding source. Thank you. Any more discussion or questions on 15A? I'll call for a vote on 15A. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Council members, uh, if I could get a nod of the head, are you okay with consolidating 15B through G? Uh, the chair moves to consolidate 15B through G. Is there a second? Second. A second by Mr. Culver. All those in favor and consolidation approval signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We're now at 15H. 15H is an ordinance authorizing the issuance of General Obligation Warrants Series 2015A and General Obligation Taxable Refunding Warrants Series 2015B. We need unanimous consent to act on this tonight. The chair moves for unanimous consent. Second. second by Mr. Kling. Dr. Robinson, how do you vote? Yay. Council members, Mr. Russell, may I make a point of order? Yes, please. Uh, I've just realized the, that this wording is not correct. It's only for the issuance of general obligation taxable refunding series 2015B. <clears throat> that A is not a part of this. Okay, Mr. Elfron, can you advise the chair? Can I just say we're voting on 2015B? You can. Okay, council members, are you okay with that? So we'll read it. Ordinance authorizing the issuance of general obligation warrant series 2015B and General Obligation Taxable Refunding Warrant Series 2015-B. Is that correct, Mr. Taylor? Uh, no, sir. It's no. just the last phrase. Forget the first series of warrants, General Obligation Taxable Run Refunding Warrant Series 2015-B. It's only one series. Okay. So it's ordinance authorizing the issuance of General Obligation Taxable Refunding Warrants Series 2015-B. B. Okay. Second. Okay, so let's, now we know what we've got on the table. Let's make sure we have unanimous consent. Uh, the chair moves for unanimous consent. Ms. Kling, you'll second that? Yes, and Dr. Robinson? Yes. Aye. Aye. Uh, the chair votes aye. We have unanimous consent. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Mr. Kling. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. 
15 U is a resolution authorizing the city attorney to settle the claims of Vincent Fails. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Dr. Robinson. Discussion. <clears throat> Mr. Jeffron, could you explain this, please? Well, members of the council, the, we don't usually have much discussion when we have uh, uh, settlements of claim on the agenda, but uh, this was uh, an in individual who suffered a sewer uh, backup and, and damages, and this is a payment of those damages because it was the responsibility of the city. Absolutely. <coughs> Mr. President, I confuse that with the other claim that was on the agenda. This one involved some damage to a to a household that was a responsibility of the city, and this repairs damages to to the household. Councilmember's questions for Mr. Joffrey on discussion. Uh, Mr. Joffrey, can you go into detail? Or would it be inappropriate to talk about? It really would be inappropriate because it still is a pending claim until it's approved by the city council and accepted by the individual with a release signed by the individual. So, we it, it's, it really is not standard. Okay, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, and so I've got three, Dr. Robinson, Mr. Culver, and, and the chair have voted aye. And Mr. Kling, you are voting no? Okay, so it passes three to one. 15 double H is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a conservation and preservation facade easement between the city of Huntsville and Cityscapes LLC for Mason building located at 115 East Clinton Avenue. The chair moves for approval. Second, Second by Mr. Kling. Uh, Mayor Battle, who can in your uh, administration can explain this? Mr. Davis. Council members, uh, this is an effort that both myself, John Hamilton, Mayor Battle and Chad Emerson of downtown Huntsville Inc. has been working on now for about six months. Um, as most of you are aware, some of our most significant historic buildings in downtown uh, for many, many years have been demolished. Some of the best structures we used to have are no longer with us. Uh, so like some other time, uh, instances we've done downtown is we've tried to protect some of that historic structure and character with facade easements. Uh, this structure is the, the former Mason building across from our parking deck uh, there on Clinton, and it has a pending sale. Uh, any time that we have that, it's been a class four lounge in the past and, and, and some uses that haven't been conducive of really what we want our downtown to be. Uh, Cityscapes, the current ownership of, of the building, has agreed to allow us to place a facade easement on the entire facility that will run with the land forevermore, no matter who the ownership is. So as the, the building sells, it allows us to have some control of the historic character of the building to remain intact in downtown. Uh, the cost is $200,000, it's a one-time payment, and will run with the land forever it would take council resolution to to reverse that in the future and, and we're asking for your approval tonight thank you yeah. mr culver thank you mr president um, mr davis is there any way that when that property is sold and i know this is kind of a rhetorical question but is there any way we could recoup that two hundred thousand dollars or a majority of it well we we hope to you know <clears throat> what we hope to do that it's going to be conducive to some type of retail establishment or in the character of the building without gutting it and, and, and changing the facade and the interior such that it's a class four lounge that, that would be a productive sales tax and increase in property tax. So you know, we will recover that as, as it com comes back to surface. Currently the building is 100% vacant. Uh, it's a three-story building. Uh, had a former restaurant on the third floor and the first floor has typically historically been a class four lounge that we've had some issues in the past with some police efforts having to come out and we, we're trying to just get rid of that conduciveness in, in downtown. So we, and, and remain historic character of, of some of our significant, what we think is contributing structures to our downtown environment. I'm thinking, though, uh, that we would probably recover that anyway uh, if it's through sales tax. But we would, but, you know, we wouldn't ask the, the new owner to, to give us any money back. Placing the facade easement is causing a little bit of hardship on the building because we have to have, we get full control of approval of any facade changes on any four sides of the building. So, so some of that construction of remodel could cost that landowner more money to, so that's the reason of us placing facade easement and, and paying a fee for that. 
Uh, very similar to the Belt Cuts and Loft, we did that. We thought the former Belt Cuts and Department Store was a significant structure downtown, and we paid to, for them to keep the first two levels of that in, in the loft apartments. And it was very overwhelmingly supported by the community. Okay, thank you, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. More discussion, questions? Call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. 16 is legal department items, transactions. We have three vacations of easements. The chair moves to consolidate and approve them. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Culver. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We're now at non-roster communications from the public. Ms. Reed, you have three minutes. I want to congratulate the Mayor Battle for the new family member. Life has just begun in your area. Enjoy it. Okay, thank you. I see when I got some paperwork on the big picture from Ditto Landing. I saw it. It looked like that this gentleman wants to speak when I get through. He missed the sign-up sheet earlier. But anyway, I saw the big picture on some paperwork that I had that somebody had been doing the work on this for quite a long, long time when it said the big picture on the city work the night that you had your public hearing in here at 4 o'clock in the afternoon for the dead old landing or whatever. And the good doctor was hollering at me out there about for me to stay out of this mess crossing that river out there. People don't want me involved when it comes to finding out how much the city's going to spend on it. Trust me. All I want to know is what it's going to cost. We need to have another public hearing. And do those thousand people that blocked that river front once before crossing that river, do they know about what the good doctor's trying to do again? That's all I care about. When they had that picnic over there and blocked you going across the river, that ain't been two years ago. Sound like you speeded it up and got it all together when you bought the big picture in here. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Um, I think this gentleman here wants to speak, and I appreciate y'all being so good to all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Does anyone else wish to address the council? Sir, if you'll go to the microphone, state your name and address, please. My name is David Braun. David, add, I'm sorry, we didn't catch your last name, please. Braun, B-R-A-W-N. Okay, thank you. And your address, please? I'm a homeless person. Okay, welcome, Mr. Braun. I'm also a homeless advocate. I worked for a home for the state of New Hampshire four years as homeless advocate for the state at the state level. I've lived here in this city for eight years. When I first came to this city, I was homeless for one month trying to get off the streets because I wasn't going to take the abuse from other people at work. I also sued this city and it was dropped because I didn't get notice. I'm here to ask the city a question that I asked them, and it's supposed to should be addressed to Bear Maddle. I say Maddle because all he does is muddle. I asked the city, asked the mayor over a year ago, pointed out some problems with the with the problems that were existing under the I-560 bridge, I-565 bridge, better known as Ten City that was closed due to a stabbing. I, eight years ago, heard from Mark Roberts that he worked out a program, worked out something with the city, that the people could be up under there, and the city worked something out with the city with the state that the people could be up out of there, which are derived out of a lawsuit um, that happened 24 years ago when the homeless sued, um, the church sued the city on behalf of the homeless. That, that I-565 bridge, 10 City, seemed to be a problem solved, uh, solved, uh, solved a problem. The problem you guys have never solved, you still haven't solved it to this day. Months ago, Almost a year ago, we had this big old net of what are we going to do with those people under the bridge? What are we going to do with those people under the bridge? Had plenty of notice of what, what, what was going on. You guys were put on awareness of what was going on. I put you on awareness because I started the process. But nobody wanted to listen. 
We have gentlemen up here, Rusty, Lavelle, representing the homeless veterans and citizens of Huntsville. He has supposedly put up in front of this committee tiny homes. I've heard nothing of them in the agenda. Can somebody show me where they are in the agenda? We still have an attitude out here of out of sight, out of mind. We don't see them. They're not on the streets. Sir, your, your time's up. Do you need an extra minute? Yes, please. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. We don't see them on the streets. They're not a problem. We want to keep these. We want to keep homeless people out of the community, out of the streets, for they don't scare other people off. That's a lame brain philosophy. Whether you're homeless or not, you're still a human being. You still come, most of them still have right and votes, and if they don't, oh well. But the problem needs to be looked at, people. Not just shoved under the, under the, under the rug and hope the problem will go away. Because the problem's not going to go away. It's only going to get worse over time. I, if I could just have 30 more seconds. Sure, go ahead. I'm homeless because I couldn't get no help in paying my rent. I was sicker than a dog carried out of my house four times by the ambulance. I couldn't get no help paying my rent. I had to sell all my equipment, my vehicle, and everything else. But when I'm in the hospital, because I got neck and throat cancer, I'm still getting, the eviction still goes through, so now I'm blackballed in this city. And because I'm homeless, my social security check isn't what it should be. It's below 500 bucks. It's below 400 bucks. So how in the heck can I even make an improvement? You have all these people out here that say they're trying to help the people, and all they're doing is hindering the people. You can keep on feeding them. You can keep on clothing them and everything else. All you want to do, but until the problem is solved, until the problem is at least addressed, we'll never address homelessness. We never can. But we can. Sir, I need you to close up. We're, are you finished? We can look at the problem, not sweep it under the rug, sir. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the council? We're adjourned.